Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. I am so excited to have this webinar today. My name is Erin. I am the Director of Marketing here at Bandwango. I am joined by Adam from Zimi. He is the co-founder and chief evangelist. If it, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Brain. I feel it's like it's really, there. Yeah. It's totally moly. But um, we are so excited to be talking about uh, how to promote student engagement and retention through tech companies and how they are re revolutionizing higher ed. So excited to get going here. Adam, we'll get your slides up next, but if you wanted to give a little hello to everyone, let everyone know you're here. Yeah, sounds great. No, thank you, Aaron. Great to uh, be here with everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity um, to be here, Aaron, and to do this with uh, Ben Wango, um, being able to observe Ben Wango from the outside. Um, for a bit now and just very impressed uh, with the company as a whole in terms of everything that they're doing uh, to innovate and uh, provide value to, um, you know, many different demographics. So excited to uh, be here with you all. So thank you for the opportunity. Awesome. Perfect. Well, we will jump into things. I was looking through the attendee list. We definitely have some new faces. We have some current clients. We have all across the board here. So I'm going to start by giving a little background of Banwango. Um, some of our current clients will be like, we know the spiel, um, but want to make sure that everyone is on the same page here. So to begin, what is Banwango? We are a technology company that focuses on connecting communities with local businesses and local landmarks. So we do that through digital passports. These digital passports are not apps. They are mobile optimized websites. So People don't have to sign up for the app to get these onto their phone. It is just they sign up, they get a link through text and email, and then they can access those digital passes. So what we are focusing on today is how Banwango can really help higher ed organizations with that student retention, student engagement, making sure we know what students are doing on and off campus and uh, what they're interested in. So. What we are going to focus on today is we want to help you all organize all things to do on and off campus, engage all of your students, whether that be past students, those alum, present students, or future students, so those prospect students. So we are focusing on this as a way, um, as a new approach to lead generation. So making sure we have that first party data for people that are interested in your organization and reaching out to them with things that are going to entice them and interest them about your campus. This pass here on the left, you'll see we built a little uh, example pass for University of Wyoming as a check-in challenge. So um, we'll get into some of what we think are great pass ideas for higher ed organizations and what are what's live right now that people are actively using. So. Moving right ahead, what we are thinking of Banwango for higher ed, a, creating a centralized hub for campus and community activity. So we wanna focus on reducing your printing costs. We don't want you to have to print those things to do for those students that are coming on campus or when a parent asks, what is there to do in the community here? We wanna have that all in this passport that you can just tell them to sign up, get that right on their phone and they can actively engage in that community. Streamlining your processes. So making sure those forms on your website that are currently just collecting data that for people that are interested in maybe one part of what you're doing uh, with your organization, now they can focus on a broader spectrum with these passports and really engaging in all things to do. And then automating data entry with Banwango passports. So with these Banwango passes, it is real-time reports coming at you. You have access to the Banwango backend. You can see who's signing up, who's opting into communication from your organization. You can send out messages to those people that have opted in. And then also just making sure that they're engaging with that passport, checking into those businesses, checking into those locations on campus, um, all of the above there. So this is what it looks like to sign up for a Banwango pass. Oh, we're gonna, perfect. Oh, oh, sorry about that. We are toggling back and forth there. Perfect. Is that on me? Sorry, Aaron, did I mess with something? <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first time on, on big marker, so I apologize if I messed with No, you're totally fine. No worries. Perfect. So 
with these uh, signups, what happens is I'll show you what it looks like, but there's a little product card on a website that a user can sign up from. This is what the checkout form looks like. So they put their name, their uh, zip code, email, phone number, and then you just click sign up here. You will see here that they can opt into communication from your organization, and then they can also opt in to receive communication about their pass. They then receive that notification on their phone with a text. They also receive an email that can grant them access to their pass. And then this is what it looks like when they open that pass up. So you will see that here it prompts you to add the pass to your home screen. So it looks like an app. So right here, add to your home screen, save, and then you'll see here that it populates on that home screen. You can access this anytime, anywhere. So what we've created um, for Passport Ideas for Higher Ed, as I mentioned, we focused on three different ideas here. So past students, those alumni, present students, and then those future students, so those prospects. Past students, we're thinking homecoming weekend, parents weekend, exclusive savings passes or check-in challenges for those audiences. These can be, again, businesses that are on and off campus. These can be um, sporting event check-in challenges. So. An example here is you can check into 10 sporting events throughout the year. Maybe you include basketball, maybe you include football games, baseball games, softball games, whatever it may be. And then they have their chance to win exclusive university swag. So maybe that's a hat or a t-shirt, keychain. Uh, within the Bandwango platform, this is all available with points. So you can assign a certain amount of points when a user checks into a business, they can then use those points to win swag. Maybe you just want to offer that savings pass aspect that will just list out all the businesses that they can then redeem a discount or coupon at the businesses that are listed. For those present students, a student orientation check-in challenge. We think this can be super useful for those weeks that new students are coming to visit campus, getting themselves familiar. All of those schools on campus, all of the resources, the buildings with the clubs, uh, maybe student unions, the dining hall, making sure that they're checking out all of those different businesses or areas on campus. These redemption processes can happen in three ways. So one, there's a simple redemption that they can just click and you are redeemed or checked in. Two, there's a PIN code, so you will assign a different PIN code for each business or place on campus. And then three, there's a GPS um, availability as well. So if they're within 0.2 miles, they can check in if they validate their location through their phone settings. So moving on to a student savings pass, we know that local businesses offer savings to students. Um, this can all be highlighted on one simple pass. So highlighting all those businesses on and off campus that have student discounts. Future students, a campus check-in challenge. So very similar to the student orientation check-in challenge, just making sure that they are aware of what all is available on campus and all of their resources that they have and making sure they're not missing out on anything. So I wanna make sure that they check into all of those businesses on campus. And then we also think that a PhD candidate check-in challenge, or if you have any grad students that are coming back uh, and wanna check out the campus, this is a great way to highlight those things to do. You don't have to put this on a piece of paper anymore and set, spend thousands of dollars on printing. You can now really focus this on a digital passport. They have it on the in the palm of their hands through a mobile pass. So what does Banwango provide in terms of data? You own 100% of your data. Our partners use this data to build out alumni communication, educate and engage current students on campus and community happenings, and generate leads for incoming students. Capturing that first party data. So names, email addresses, phone numbers, and those interests on and off campus. So you can see where those students are checking in or engaging, redeeming those discounts. You can then set up maybe an event at one of those businesses that students really love to go to, um, really focusing on what's capturing those students' attention. Streamlining those existing programs. So forget about those miscellaneous forms on your site, put data into meaningful real-time reports with the Banwango Pass. 
And then understanding where your students are going. As I mentioned, you have real-time reports that are navigating and telling you what's happening, where are these students checking in, where are they focusing their attention in your community. So whether it's a local business in the community or a sporting event on campus, track student engagement through check-ins and redemptions with Banlingo technology. So, we know that Van Wango might not be familiar in the higher ed organizations. We want to make sure that you know we are an established technology platform. We work with over 380 communities. I think we're at 402 right now. 19 state tourism offices. We have our over 30,000 local businesses on our passports. We have tracked over 1 million redemptions and check-ins, over 300,000 email marketing opt-ins, and over 10 million payouts to local businesses. Some background here, Van Wango not only offers these savings passes and the check-in challenges, we also do paid passes for a lot of our partners. So uh, a lot of DMOs or destination marketing organizations want to have a paid attractions pass or a paid tasting pass. We do offer that as well. So that's where that $10 million comes from. And then how does Van Wango work? So we are your back office. We build the passport. Our client services team helps you put your strategies into reality by building and configuring your product. We help your organization to strategize for distribution. So our client success team will help you set the strategy, integrate it into your website, and drive more conversions. We heard all your cats. So we know that reaching out to local businesses, that's a lot of bandwidth for your team. We have a team that does strictly that. They work with those local businesses, making sure that they are aware of how these passes work and what it's going to look like when a student comes in and uses this pass. So our local business team takes care of all onboarding and maintenance of the business participating in your, pro in your programs. This includes outreach, accounting, onboarding, training, and support. And on that note, we support it all Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We have a customer service team. So if there's ever anyone that's having trouble with a pass, we are here to help navigate that issue. So that is the long spiel from Van Wango. I hope you all learned a little bit about our platform and how we are able to help provide for uh, higher ed organizations. I did want to share my screen for just a second to show what is going on in the community right now. So we currently have a visit the SEC pass, and I know this is uh, populating a little funky, I believe. Oh, maybe it's not. Okay, cool. So this is what the visit SEC pass looks like. This is that product card I was mentioning. So if you scroll here, you can get your pass. That checkout form slides out from the right of the page. We had multiple different destinations focus on, they wanted to get futures prospects, current students out and about to all of these different areas. They all work together to get a bunch of businesses onboarded. You can check into these different businesses and when exclusive, visit the SEC swag. So pretty cool here. And then also we have a savings pass, a college town savings pass for Spartanburg that is live. Let's move this over. Perfect. So you can see their landing page here. Looks pretty similar with that product card. Students can sign up and then get those exclusive deals and discounts with their mobile pass. So these are a couple examples that are live today. You can find these on Google. These have really uh, pushed the limit for Van Wango. This is where we got the idea to start reaching out for to our higher ed organizations and has produced a ton of earned media. We have seen more uh, PR and earned media uh, articles come from these two, um, from these two different passes than we have with a lot of our other passes. So definitely successful campaigns here. Perfect. On that note, Adam, I am passing things over to you. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Aaron. That was super uh, helpful to be able to see some of that and just to kind of see the direction that Van Wango is going with this. And just to, to speak to a few of those things at a high level in terms of, you know, the topic of this webinar, revolutionizing higher ed. Um, I've worked uh, explicitly with enrollment teams over the last decade um, at colleges and universities across the country. Um, and I've been in education for the last 17 years or so. Um, and so just to speak to the paradigm as a whole, 
Um, for those of you that many of you are familiar, if, if you don't know, um, there's a lot changing in higher ed, of course. Uh, there's an enrollment cliff um, that is on the horizon in terms of uh, less students actually enrolling at universities. And I think that one of the things that's so important right now for any college or university is to think about how are we innovating and how are we bringing new technology to bear, not only to you know, engage new prospects, but also to retain you know, students that are enrolling. And I think that the reason I was excited about Bandwango when I first learned about it, I think um, you know, having been in this space for quite some time now, I see it as a very unique, innovative way to engage students and get them retained because we've often talked about the campus visit in higher ed. I see that evolving more into a community visit. And what I mean by that and where I think Van Wango can lead the way is that the more you interweave into that campus visit, the community, and the more they become a part of the entire college experience, obviously the more power it's going to be in terms of engaging students as prospects and getting them to retain there at the university when they end up enrolling. The more the community is a part of the campus experience, the more you're gonna see an uptick in, in mental health, social, physical, spiritual, all those things are a big piece of the student journey. And the more the community is a, a bigger aspect of that, um, obviously the more impact that our college and universities are gonna see in terms of enrollment and retention. And so I'm really excited about what Van Wango is doing there. Colleges have to innovate they have to do more than what they're doing today, right? It can't just be simply, hey, we're going to send out 10,000 emails, you know, twice a month um, to students and try to keep them engaged or even just get them to a campus once and hope that's going to suffice. There's many other ways now today through technology that you engage students. It's not just, you know, text messaging and things like that. Like a lot of that is uh, antiquated. I don't think, you know, AI chats are going to be the solve all uh, in terms of keeping students engaged. You have to come up with a lot more innovative ways to keep students engaged. Uh, and so in terms of revolutionizing the space, I, I'm excited to present here with Ben Wango because I think Ben Wango has a very unique approach to this, just like Aaron talked about. Um, and so with that, yeah, I'd love to share a little bit about what Zimi does um, and how we dovetail nicely um, with Ben Wango in terms of creating an atmosphere of engagement and a community of engagement. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, wait, that's, that's, that's Aaron's I, presentation. I, don't, I got you. <laughs> uh, I'll totally blow that one up. I probably blew my own. Um, so... Yeah, just so everybody knows too, um, you know, Zimi, I was a former high school teacher when I started Zimi, uh, passionate about seeing students thrive, right? And so Zimi as a whole as a company is very passionate about seeing students thrive. Um, and we're on a mission to redefine the way students and colleges connect by building community. Um, over the last several years, um, we've grown into uh, the number one student engagement platform um, that we boost conversion for our colleges and universities at every single stage of the funnel. So we'll talk a little bit about that uh, and what that looks like. So we've been very um, blessed to be uh, an app in the App Store that gets a lot of accolades, both from App Store, from Apple, uh, and from our students. Um, we hit number 13 most downloaded social app out of 45,000 social apps uh, in that category on Apple. Um, we've been hot app of the week. Um, we've been listed as new and noteworthy. Um, we have 4.7 stars uh, with over 12,000 ratings today. And this, this slide needs to be updated. But um, And we have more than 2,500 active colleges, communities on Zimi. So there really isn't a college or university in the United States today um, that you could say, hey, like, are there students on Zimi that are interested in that school? 100% there is because we have over a million users now, um, 1.2 million. And so they're interested in these schools or exploring these schools. And really... For the students, it's all about who else is looking at the school, who else is interested, right? Before they even apply today, they want to know who else is interested in the school. Do we share the same passions and interests, right? Um, and does this school look like the type of school that I want to be at through the lens of other students who are interested? Um, we have 180 plus colleges and universities that work with Zimi today uh, to create uh, very inclusive communities for our college, um, for the students that are looking at these schools. Uh, so we'll talk about what that looks like in the feature sets. Um, that are involved in that. So yeah, just quickly, the student experience on Zimi um, is incredibly social, right? And we want to combine it with a true authentic experience. And so you're finding friends, you're finding roommates, there's a study buddy, there's discovery features, you can put in your interests like, hey, I'm into backpacking and camping, it's going to match me with other students that are looking at the same schools 
Um, you know, Aaron was talking about SEC schools, right? We have a lot of great SEC schools, Auburn, Mississippi State, Texas A&M. So if I'm following one of those schools on Zimi uh, and I put in, hey, I'm into backpacking and camping, it's going to match me every single day with new students that have those same passions and interests, right? And so now in the palm of my hand, I'm getting a push notification saying, hey, did you know that Aaron also is into backpacking, right? And so it serves this up to you. So it's just facilitating these friendships in a new and powerful way um, that's never been done before that has a profound impact on uh, enrollment across the funnel. I don't think I have the slide in here, but students that are inquiries that are applying to a school, if they're on Zimi, they apply at twice the rate of students that don't join Zimi. They deposit at four times the rate of students that don't join Zimi. They melt at half the rate, right? And they yield overall 3.6 times the rate of students don't join Zimi. So there's a profound impact throughout the entire funnel just by helping students make friends and connect in community with a college. Um, the second piece of that, there's virtual social events where students are connecting in these events that colleges are running. Uh, and they'll do things like, uh, you know, speed friending or name that meme. It's just fun social events to get students to uh, connect and get to know one another. The profiles on Zimi really set Zimi apart from other social apps, right? So if you go to Snapchat, you go to Instagram, um, those are, you know, we're not a replacement for Snapchat and Instagram, of course. You're always going to have multiple platforms that you're using for different purposes, right? And so I may have LinkedIn and Twitter. I use them for different purposes. Same with Gen Z. What's really attractive on Zimi and keeps continuing to bring them back are the profiles are so rich and robust. You're able to see fun facts about other people. You're able to see all of the interests and passions they have. You're able to see their roommate tests uh, or their roommate matching scores, things like that. So it's very robust in its ability to kind of bring the story to life for each individual student and help you see is this someone that you know I want to connect with. Um, we, entered, we just added, uh, added in campus events and hot tips. So now you can see all events that are happening across campus, events that are happening in the community, um, and you can see hot tips, right? Things that like, hey, where's the best place to grab a cup of coffee, you know, on campus, you know, at 5 p.m. at night? Those type of tips that you can't really Google um, are things that students are using now within Zimi. Um, so at a high level, that's kind of the student experience there. Um, when we partner with a college and university, this is really how we kick it off. We send out SMS to the students once a month. We invite them into the community. They then come in. They have a feed from the college that's usually current students at the college, just kind of showcasing what's going on at the college or within the community. And then students are able to, um, you know, engage with that content. And then these group chats are what students jump into um, all the time. So the average student on Zimi is coming back 13 times a day. They're coming back to these group chats. They're coming back to the profiles. They're just a way for these students to get to know each other, to connect and engage. Uh, and literally the chats run all day long, 24 seven. So it's really crazy to see how much the students just want to get to know each other. And I think it makes sense, right? Like when your student goes to a website and asks like a uh, you know, website widget, hey, like, you know, can you tell me what the admitted student date is, right? Like it's this one-off question. They may come once or twice throughout the year, but it's not something that brings them back every single day. On Zimi, the power lies in the fact that you're connecting with peers that you're literally like, who am I going to room with? Who am I going to be in the cafeteria with? Right. Who am, you know, am I going to be in class with? That's the things that, you know, a senior in high school, a junior high school, they really care about those things. They want to build that network. They want to build those friendships. And that's what has such a powerful impact uh, on enrollment. And then at the end of the day, you know, Zimi is dedicated to our college partners, driving enrollment, driving conversion. We celebrate those decisions. So there's cool features in the app. Once you get accepted, you know, we're celebrating you. Once you commit to a school, it's celebrating you. Um, and so this is actually a GIF here on the right, but this is a PDF, so it's not going to play. But uh, it's kind of like, ah, and like the colors of the school fall down. So it's pretty sweet. Um, and yeah, so just to kind of continue emphasis on that, this is a full funnel approach. So I think in the past where we've seen just a lot of innovation is colleges and universities were using admitted Facebook groups. The challenge with Facebook was kind of twofold in that one, you know, most students don't have Facebook anymore, right? Like, so my daughter's 14 years old. You know, she was telling me the other day, like, I asked her, hey, Abby, how many, you know, of your friends have Facebook? She's like, are you kidding me, dad? Like, literally zero have Facebook. And the reason for that is because, you know, grandma and grandpa on there, great grandma and grandpa literally were on Facebook for her. Um, and so not that it's not a good platform. It's just that. There's, it doesn't feel private to students, right? And it's not a private space for them to be able to engage and connect. Um, so that was a problem with Facebook. Uh, secondly, was just 
the engagement was even if you could get a student to actually create an account on Facebook and join your admitted student group, they would immediately bounce out to snap, right? Like, oh, hey, thanks. Peace. I'm out. And then they're all on Snapchat. Um, and so there was a lack of adoption, lack of engagement. So with the colleges that we partner with, they've dropped Facebook in its entirety. And they not only focus on the admitted portion of that community, but they moved it upstream, right, to inquiries into applicants because they realized the sooner we're able to connect these students, the better it is for everybody, right? The better it is for the students, the better it is for the college. You're just creating community earlier in the funnel. Uh, and that's really impactful in terms of conversion. Um, so that's what we really focus on there. Um, we do have a data sync with the colleges where, you know, we have a full API with Slate. Um, we have SFTP with other um, CRMs uh, in the space. And so we're able to know, hey, is this student an applicant? Is this student an admitted student? And then we tailor our comms in such a way to invite them into a specific part of the community where they belong. Because you can join an interested part of a college community. You can join an admitted section. You can join a committed section. We know from the data with the college um, where that student needs to be. And we're able to get them into that aspect of the community. Um, again, you're reaching students at the palm of your hand. So when you, you know, that's a big difference uh, in terms of the students just being able to pick up their mobile phone and come back into a community regularly on any given day. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the next slide here. So the data piece works both ways. So there's data that's coming over from the CRM. There's also a lot of data, and this is a big reason colleges partner with Zimi, that we're passing back to the college. So we sit on a very unique data set in that we have engagement analytics on everything that's happening in the app. We're able to help you know who your students are, right? Where they are in the funnel, um, how to move them throughout the funnel and really what's working. And so um, we are able to gauge predictively in terms of, is the student going to deposit? Are they not going to deposit? Uh, and then we're able to provide scores back to the college and universities based on that engagement. So traditionally colleges and universities are using um, you know, great scores uh, for predictive deposit and enrollment based on, you know, more historical data, like what's the zip code of the student? Um, you know, what is their estimated financial contribution? What are some of these things that, you know, have predicted in the past that they're going to enroll? Where Zimi has really innovated is, hey, that's great. That's, that's point in time type analysis of prediction. Um, but we can give you that score evolving dynamically every single day of the year, right? So last week, that student may have been incredibly engaged. Something may have happened on a Saturday where they decided, oh, actually, I'm not as interested in the school. That next week, that engagement dips and you see that the counselor is able to know, hey, like maybe the student, you know, needs a little more um, personal attention, give them a call, be able to speak with them and try to, you know, see where they're at. And so that's helping you gauge it throughout the entire year. And so this is this last slide here, just kind of showing you how we bucket that. So um, for students that are in the high bucket, as we pass back into the CRM, um, those are going to be 98% of those students are likely to deposit if you hit the high bu bucket de um, designation. Students that are in the low bucket, only 2% of students that are in the low bucket um, are going to end up depositing. Lots of schools spend a ton of time on the low bucket, and it's, a, it's actually like a complete suck of your bandwidth. Because you're spending a lot of time on students, emailing them, calling them. And these are students that you would know from a dynamic social engagement score, very unlikely to ever deposit or go to the university. Um, and really where we work with our clients is hon honing in on that medium bucket. Those are going to be students that, you know, they're getting a 50, 60 percent score. And just with a little more personal attention, um, with a little more love from the college and university, those are often students that you can have a tremendous impact on make them feel connected part of the community and really move them into that high bucket where they're going to deposit. And so um, that's all, you know, really actionable data insights that we provide to the college um, to help them, um, you know, along the journey and to uh, impact conversion. So I've talked a lot, so I'll stop talking and I'll pass it back to you, Aaron. No. Yeah. I, I wish I had this. So I, we were talking about my college experience before we all hopped in this webinar. And I wish I had a way to gauge, you know, what the interests were of the people that were on campus. I had a really interesting high school career. And I, I think this would have been a super helpful way for me to decide where I wanted to go to school and what, what was, uh, what my values were in matching that. So I wish 
I wish I was on TV, but I, you know, <laughs> keep we hear a lot of people say that, Aaron. And uh, I mean, I'm the same way. Like I didn't make a good friend until second semester. And I think right. a lot of students, right. That pressure of, you know, making friendships and connecting in community uh, is significant. And that's why we see such high attrition rates for freshman year of college. Um, when students get there and they just feel like they're not connecting and they're not being able to, you know, meet their people. Um, and that's where we really want to hone in is you just shouldn't have to wait anymore to actually get to the campus to experience that. Yeah. Um, or even an admitted student day or anything like that. We want you to feel comfortable at ease, like you have made really good friendships before you ever arrive. So for you all, and I encourage people to put questions in the chat, but I'm, I'll start us off here. So do you all target those audiences for organizations? So that are in high school or that are interested in college, does Zimi do that? Or is it on the uh, organization to make sure that those prospective students are on the platform? Yeah, so it's actually um, works both ways. So we reach out to the students on behalf of the school. So the student may say, hey, I'm an inquiry to this university. I'm an applicant, I'm a mid student. We'll invite those students into the community um, on behalf of the school. And so a lot of the school's adoption will take place from that. Um, secondly, there's a lot of students that just download Zimi organically because okay. it's spread so much and it's been a top app in the app store. Yep. So students just download it on their own and then they're following communities on their own. Um, and so it's really kind of those two fold approaches that drive uh, the user growth uh, for the colleges. Oh my gosh. That is, yeah, so interesting. So I know that you have case studies on your website, but can you share just a few instances that you've really seen this be something more than you even expected it to be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think when we first started Zimi, right, we had an inkling of like, oh my goodness, like, you know, connecting students and community yeah. uh, would be really powerful. When our current CEO, Vanessa Pitta, came on in 2018, she really kind of put all engines um, on blast towards community. Yeah. Um, and we pushed forward towards that. And I think, you know, we all thought, well, yeah, if students make friends, there's gonna be an impact. I don't think we knew like the significance of that impact or to what extent, um, because now today, if you're on Zimi, you yield 3.6 times higher than students that don't join the community. Uh, and so that is absolutely profound. Yeah. Um, we have clients now that eight out of every 10 students are on campus. We're on Zimi, right? Wow. Our clients that have the lowest conversion, um, still one out of every two students that hit in campus was on Zimi. So, it's had just a profound, massive impact on yeah. conversion for the college, but also on retention, right? Because we started to do some initial case studies. The retention studies are a little more challenging for us in that we need to have data from the SIS system. Right. We've been wholly focused on enrollment. Um, we're moving into student affairs with a lot of the features that we're releasing uh, in the future. Um, so we hope to do more analysis there. But the case studies that we've done thus far or just the early studies that we've done thus far with colleges have shown that retention is significantly higher for students that connected in Zimi versus yeah. students that did not connect, especially for first gen or underrepresented minority groups. Right. Um, so we're, we're excited to continue to um, you know look into that and um, explore what the broader impact is across uh, retention, not just enrollment. That's amazing. Um, how do you, does Zimi ensure student privacy and security? And along those lines, how do you ensure that it is students that are joining this platform? And and is there a way to make sure that it's uh, prospective students or it yeah. could be anyone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as you grow in rankings in the app store, right? Like you're yeah. going to deal with more bots. You're dealing with scammers, things of that, right. that nature that can come to bear. And so um, we focus a lot of our attention in keeping the community safe, keeping the community clean, protecting that for our college partners. Um, and so the users that come into Zimi have a full throttle of things that they can do from a privacy standpoint, right? So if you want your pay, your profile to be completely private in every shape and form, you have that ability on Zimi. Um, in terms of things that we put into the app to detect inappropriate behavior, we have AI in the app that's constantly running that's detecting anything um, that is inappropriate in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, users have the power to report, and if they report, and we have five reports in quick succession on anything that's said in a group chat or a DM that users automatically remove from the community. Um, all of our colleges and partners have uh, a full suite of tools that they can use to remove users. Um, and so it's very safe. Uh, it's very monitored um, for our colleges and universities. Um, and really, if anyone gets into anything, 
they don't get into it on Zimi. They yeah. move over to Snapchat, right? Where it's truly the wild right. west. And then a lot of that is about education and educating our students, educating our kids, <laughs> educating, you know, students in the school. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't want to engage in conversations on Snap or move over to conversations on Snap or Instagram, wherever it may be, um, with people that you don't know, right? So I think that um, that's really a critical piece to the equation um, in terms of keeping students safe for the future is it's not only just the tools and the technology, but really the education. Yeah, no, absolutely. So on that note, are students able to add their other social media platforms into their profile or does there have to be like a direct message between students to share other info? Yeah. So, um, you can share your Snapchat, you can share your Instagram, you can share your TikTok, you can share, um, your Spotify. Um, so that's totally up to the user. If they want to make that available to people, um, on the app, they can do that. If not, they can keep it completely private and you can't see it until you actually connect with them. So, um, either one of those options is available. Perfect. We did get a question. So how would you suggest a college or university market a passport like the visit SEC, visit the SEC pass to current students? That is a great question. Um, we obviously Van Wango, um, it has worked with a lot of destinations. So we have narrowed down what works best for marketing passes within a destination. We think on campus collateral is going to be huge. So getting those posters, flyers, table tents, anything with a QR code out and about will be really helpful. Um, also getting it in the hands of those student resource centers. So the student union or the student uh, tour operators. That's not the word. That's a DMO word <laughs> instead of a, a higher ed word. But um, getting it in the hands of the admissions office, getting it in the hands of just the correct resources on, on campus to have those collateral pieces, be able to have those discussions. And as I mentioned, we have teams here that are help that are here to help uh, with any onboarding for, let's say it is maybe an office on campus that is one of the check-in locations we have a team here that's here to help support uh, and facilitate those conversations and train on how someone can sign up for a pass so um really getting it in front of their faces maybe in the dorms uh ra is being educated on this as well so yeah and one of the things we've talked about between van wango and zimi is you know getting those passes even into the app um to where students can ex access that and it would be you know distributed to a, a large group of students that is following any given university in the app so um, something that, you know, we thought about for the product roadmap down the line. Yeah, perfect. Well, I know you mentioned in the middle of our presentations that you think that higher ed really needs to move the needle uh, to make an impact now. Yeah. What do you feel like is going to make the most impact with these higher ed organizations in uh, student retention and making sure that we're, we're getting those students engaged with their community? Do you think it's technology or do you think there's things that they should be doing on campus as well? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big question. Um, yeah. I think that at the end of the day, you have to create super strong community, right? So whether that's in-person community or whether that's virtual, I think you have to be in both. Uh, and they really inform one another. And I think the more that we interweave the local community into that um, specific college community, the more powerful it's going to be. There are colleges that are, you know, they can show, you know, filtered Instagram photo of the quad and students fall in love with it because their campus is so beautiful, right? Um, there's a lot of other colleges that don't have that ability to lean on that beautiful campus as the piece to allure or attract students to come. Those schools, I think it's absolutely critical that they're using tools like Van Wango to integrate into the broader community and create community. But for me, like I believe that, and there's a lot of different things that schools can focus on, of course, but where we're really, you know, honed in on at Zimi is community. That's absolutely critical. So what are you doing on campus to create community for new students, for current students? What are you doing um, virtually to create that community for students? Yeah. All of those things are super important. Um, and I think that, you know, some of the schools that actually community college, right? Um, are really the leaders in access, uh, at the forefront of access in education. Um, they're called community colleges, yeah. um, but in some ways it's a misnomer oftentimes because they're actually the schools that have the hardest time creating community. Right. Um, because you have students that are going for two years, 
they're not necessarily rooming there. They're not necessarily going to school based on the four year traditional experience, right? For that yeah. some students that go to a four year school are looking for. Um, so I think that there's a tremendous opportunity for community colleges to build better community. I think there's tremendous opportunity for all four year schools to build better community. Um, you know, we have schools that it doesn't matter whether they have a community or not, they're going to meet their class because they're amazing brands. Right. So if you think about like Berkeley or USC or some of these schools that are just just absolutely phenomenal schools that students are flocking to and they're highly selective colleges. But those schools, they build virtual community on Zimi, Right. And they innovate because it's just like the Nikes of the world. Right. They don't stop running ads. They want that brand primacy. They want to continue to innovate. They want to continue to be um, at the front of it for their student population. Uh, and so regardless of where you're at on the spectrum, whether you're a community college, you're at the front of access you're a highly selective school, each and every school within that spectrum has to really hone in on community and making students feel like they're an intimate part of that community as a whole. Yeah. Otherwise, I think that you are gonna have a very difficult time with the enrollment cliff that's coming up in yeah. terms of getting students to campus or retaining them. Well, yeah, and I like, you touched on having an authentic experience. I think Gen Z really uh, focuses on authenticity as a generation, as a whole. And I think that having these innovative solutions that really touch on authentic experiences where they have that community as well. So I think both Zimi and Van Wango really focus on those authentic experiences and they want people to have these experiences that stand out, but maybe it, maybe it doesn't have to be at the USC or yep. the Berkeley of the world. It can be at the local community college where you can get a great education and you also are in a great location. And to add on yep. to that, I wanted to say that Van Wango, we clearly, this is, we're dibble dabbling in higher ed. We, we have yeah. uh, made ourselves pre prevalent in the DMO space, but um, we, some of our most successful clients are some of the smallest DMOs that we work with. So it's like these tiny little places in Indiana, or we have a, some clients that That's are in cool. Alaska that the population is so, yep. so small, but they're creating these passports that are engaging and enticing for people to take part in. And not only is it targeting the visitors, it's targeting those locals. And so I think that there's ways to engage the community in that isn't just a piece of paper that says, here's things to do. It's, it's making sure that people are brought together in a way that is creative and, um, gets people excited to yep. be in there. That's why I love your, I think those check-in challenges, I think that's huge. Right? Yeah. It's like just essentially gamifying part of this experience uh, and getting students to really get out into the community right. um, and, and experience the community. And so I think that's going to be, it's going to be super fun, you know, yeah. for every school that you're launching that for. Awesome. Well, Adam, do you have any closing remarks, anything, anything you want to add before we finish? No. Yeah. Nothing from me. I think people are probably, you know, done hearing me speak. So uh, <laughs> just excited to uh, be on the, the webinar with you, Aaron. And yeah, thank you to everybody that attended. And if there's anything that, you know, we can answer for you in relation to Zimi, um, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can go to the website colleges.zimi.com um, where you can talk with us directly there. Uh, and my email is just adam at Zimi if anybody wants to reach out directly. Perfect. And I just have to give a very special shout out to everybody at Zimi because you all have been so, so helpful in making sure that we have the lingo down for this space. Clearly, I have some room to work on that, but um, just making sure that we are all taken care of here at Van Wango. So very special shout out to everyone at Zimi. And if you are interested in building an experience class, please reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to sales at bandwango.com or if you want to chat with me directly, it is just Aaron at bandwango.com. So thank you all for joining. We're excited to get things going uh, in this direction and appreciate your time, Adam. Have a great day, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye.